With all these companies changing to subscription payments, bad customer service and software that keeps crashing, you may be thinking of changing your digital painting software. The problem is you don't really understand all the programs and relearning everything looks like a chore. Then you become a pirate because it's easier than dealing with all these problems. Yes, I pirate my programs. I can't really afford them anymore and the pirate versions never crashes. But I feel bad about it. Welcome to Krita, my favorite professional painting software. Here you have a lot of options, tools, color selector and brushes to work with, but today I want to explain how the layers work. When you create a new document, the program will always create two layers, one background layer and one painting layer. You can see them here in the layer docker. The plus button at the bottom creates a new layer, you can also use the insert key. We can paint in different layers and the content will remain separated. With this drop menu we can create different kinds of layers and masks. We can see them in another video, for now we'll only use normal paint layers. You can copy a layer with this button, change the position of the layers in the layer stack with these arrows, see and change the properties of the layer with this button and eliminate a layer with this trash can. In the upper part of the layer docker you have this bar to control opacity. You can change the thumbnail size here and change the blending modes with this drop menu. In the middle we have all the layers we created. Let's call them the layer stack. In the canvas the layers that are in the bottom of the layer stack will be put behind the layers on the top. We can also group layers. Just select several layers while holding Ctrl and then press Ctrl G. A group of layers will act as a single image in the layer stack composed by all the layers within the group. Finally, in every layer you have these buttons and icons. From left to right, the eye button will show or hide a layer. This icon will show a thumbnail of the layer. This icon shows the type of the layer. Then we have the name of the layer that you can also change with a double click. And with this lock, you can lock or unlock the layer. If it's locked, you cannot do any action whatsoever with the layer. So far so good, really easy stuff. But now we have these two buttons that are the base of the layer system Krita uses, Inherit Alpha and Lock Alpha. To understand how they work, we need to know what Alpha is. Alpha is transparency, and basically that's all we need to know. Really, all painted layers in Krita, when they are created, are full of transparent pixels, the Alpha. That's why Krita always puts a background layer in new documents, remember? Otherwise we'll have just a transparent background represented by a chessboard pattern. When you paint in a layer you are adding paint pixels. You can actually think of a layer as the combination between an area of paint pixels and an area of transparent pixels. This last one, let's call it the alpha area. And this alpha is not simple transparency. In the digital world this transparency can also act as an invisibility cloak. Let's see how it works. Lock alpha does what it says. When selected this button will lock the alpha area of the layer so we cannot change it. Therefore we can only paint in the area that is already painted. This is very useful for coloring and shading like this. If you want to make a sphere just paint a circle and we can easily add shadows and highlights using the lock alpha button. And once we are finished we can uncheck it to continue adding other things. I also like to use this feature to change the color of my line art very quickly. This is very handy but sometimes we need something with more flexibility to keep the base colors, shadows and highlights separated. A non-destructive method that is. For that we can use the inherit alpha feature. When you check the inherit alpha button, the layer will inherit the alpha area of the layers below it in the layer stack. And this inherited alpha area will act as an invisibility cloak for that layer but provided that these layers are within a group. Let's see it in action with a sphere again. Here I select a layer and press Ctrl G to create a single layer group. This layer in the group will be my base layer, so let's name it base layer. Then I draw a circle there. To add shadows I create a new layer on top of it and name it shadows layer. There if I try to paint the shadows just like that, it will be difficult to stay within the line. But if I check the inherit alpha button, we suddenly have what it is known as a clipping mask. What is happening here is that the shadows layer is taking the alpha area of the base layer and using it as an invisibility cloak, better known as a mask. In other words, the shadows layer is inheriting the same transparency of the base layer, or layers if you have more than one below. And we can do the same for the highlights. If you still don't get it, 
just go to Krita and try it, you will get it in no time. Now the question is, why does Inherit Alpha only work in layers within groups? The answer is specificity. We need groups to specify from which layer we want to inherit the alpha areas. Let's see it with a more complex example. And let's say that I want to keep my base color shadows and highlights separated. I start with a line art, then I will make a group of layers for the face, another for the hair, and another for the clothes. Then I apply the base color of all of them in a base layer. I can even create groups within a group. For example, here I separate the eyes from the rest of the face. If I want, I can separate the iris of the eyes in another group and so on and so forth. Groups within groups to the end of RAM, basically. But no need for that here. After I have the base colors, I create the shadows layers with the inherit alpha checked. And here we can see why using groups is important. Because when I add shadows to the hair, they do not affect the face even though the layers of the hair are on top of the layers of the face. See? They only affect the hair because the layer is within the hair group. Let's put everything in the same group for a moment. In this case, the shadows from the hair also affect the face because it is inheriting its alpha as well. And that's why groups are necessary. They provide specificity and give us a lot of flexibility to work. If we put back all the layers in the respective groups, everything works perfectly. Here I keep working on the face and the clothes with all the base colors, shadows, highlights and everything separated from everything else using the inherit alpha feature. In other programs this would be called clipping masks. Here is more like a clipping group. But now let's say that I want to add a rim light that affects not only the hair or the face or the clothes but everything at the same time. For that I can select the groups I have and combine them in another group that we can call my character. Then inside this group and on top of all the groups within, I can add a new layer with the inherent alpha checked and paint a ring light in the whole character. This is how the basic layer system in Krita works. Afterwards you can add some new layers to give it some more lighting effects using blending modes and you will have a finished illustration. This method is useful and extensively used because once you have everything separated like this, you can change the base color of all your layers pretty quickly using the lock alpha button and obtain different lighting scenarios and make very quick changes.